Good evening and welcome to the municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and regular council meeting for August 11th, 2020. It is approximately 7.10 p.m. If we could all please say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we could please just pause for a moment of silence. We're going to start with a roll call, please. Mayor Greesock? Here. Mrs. Gatos? Here. Mr. Poach? Here. Mr. Harvey? Here. Mr. Wolfram? Here. Mr. Osenko? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Mr. Little? Here. Mr. Rapture? Here. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are once again holding a Zoom meeting due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The numbers spiked uh, a little bit when it was time for us to do the advertising. Once again, that's one of the issues we have is that um, we have advertising requirements for our meetings and there's a time delay. So sometimes we make decisions and uh, we have to do them you know, early and sometimes things change, but we really want to get back into person as, as quickly as possible. But uh, this is uh, about as good as we're going to get. So uh, this evening we have our citizens night and our regular council meeting combined. We have uh, a handful of citizens remarks that I'll be um, speaking of. All of council has received all of the copies from all of the citizens and also the complete remarks will be placed in a permanent record with the um, minutes of the meeting. So uh, council, we ask um, two of our department heads to come here, uh, join us this evening. Uh, Tara Greesock from the Senior Citizens Center and Nicole Henline from the library, both directors, and to give us updates on, uh, on the facilities. So I'm gonna start with Tara, if you could just give a, a, a brief update on uh, the Senior Center, please. You're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, over the past week, I've been updating both uh, municipal council members, and I also had a meeting with the Monroeville Council of Senior Citizens uh, to discuss the progress of opening the Senior Center. Um, I wanted to stress first and foremost that the reopening guidelines for the Senior Center are highly restrictive compared to other public facilities due to the population we serve. We all know that um, COVID affects um, the senior population more than any other population uh, in our country. So um, at this time, myself and one other staff person, Carol Olson, are the only ones that are employed at the center. Um, we're trying um, to offer as many programs and services as we can uh, within the confines of the restrictions and the guidelines of the CDC. Um, this week, we did uh, bring back one of our part-time silver sneakers instructors, and uh, she has started online uh, classes um, for the members of the center. Um, per gov the governor's orders, um, all the senior centers across PA, specifically Allegheny County, Philadelphia, and Westmoreland remain closed, including ours. Um, this is due to the recent spike in COVID cases in our area, as well as the restrictions on um, the number of participants that are allowed in the center. Um, recently, the governor stated only um, 25 people can be in a public facility at one time. So that obviously slowed down our um, progress on reopening. Uh, all of the senior centers, including the Monroeville Senior Center, are working based off of phase one uh, through the National Council of Aging. 
on reopening guidelines that is strictly planning and virtual classes only. That's the Monroe Senior Center and all senior centers nationally across the country. We're all doing uh, the same things. It's really unfortunate um, with the new cases, uh, we are being instructed to be very cautious in our reopening of the center. So uh, we're following suit with everybody else. Um, on Monday though, we did open the main office um, to the public for in-person uh, services. This includes um, people coming in to sign up for access, Port Authority bus passes, um, getting assistance, getting farmer's market vouchers, um, any kind of services that we can provide or assist them with through the PA Department of Aging. Um, we are also open for our members. There's a lot of programs that we had scheduled for the spring and summer that people had signed up for and have been waiting for refunds. So they are able to come in the office now and get their refunds. Um, we're also available to help seniors um, get set up with our online uh, virtual programming system. It's very complicated for them. A lot of them try to call over the phone um, and it's just kind of hard to explain to them how to get registered over the phone. So then now they're able to come in do the main lobby with their smartphone, their laptop, their iPad, um, and we can sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and help them get um, set up so that they can join our virtual program. We also uh, move our our um, lending bookshelf is very popular. A lot of been asking about it. Uh, so we moved it into the main lobby area um, for them to come browse it and uh, take whatever that they, books that they would like to use. We are following CDC guidelines and um, requiring them to wear gloves and masks uh, and all books that are returned to us to go to quarantine for three days. Um, right now, only the main lobby area is open. We are not doing any on-site um, on programming. Oh boy, where'd everybody go? What happened? We see, I see you. We see you. We still see okay. you there. I can't see <laughs> you, so I'm just gonna keep going. Um, last week we started our virtual programming back up. We were doing it in uh, before um, the layoffs, the employees and we're, happy with the first week's outcome. We had over 257 views. Um, we're going to continue to expand these programs each week. Um, I was talking with UPMC um, East this morning, as well as um, Allegheny Health Network to bring back our brunch and learn program virtually. We're going to be doing virtual uh, bingo. Um, our program coordinator is putting together a lot of new craft, instructional craft classes. So People can keep a lookout. All those are done through um, Facebook Live on our private um, Facebook uh, group page. So they can go on our uh, Facebook page and find out more about that. Um, I just wanna make everybody aware that with the recent res resignation of our fitness coordinator, a lot of our um, programming and the reopening of the fitness center have been hindered a little bit. Um, Obviously with the restrictions and um, that position being vacant right now, um, we are holding off on giving a designated date for reopening. Um, once we fill that position and they have ample amount of time to get established, uh, we plan on gradually opening the fitness center um, and offering silver sneakers classes and other smaller um, programs on site that I don't have an expected date, but once I'm looking, hopefully middle of September based on uh, the restrictions and when the governor eases them and the, obviously the hiring of that um, employee, you know, I'm hoping that um, things change and we can open by mid-September. Um, I will come back at that time and give a more formal presentation to the residents on how they're going to how they can visit the center. There are a lot of new um, guidelines and procedures for entering the center. It'll be um, very restrictive at first, but uh, we're gonna be doing a video with TV 15 to um, kind of guide people through the new process and um, 
I'll show that when I come back and give a more formal presentation. But all the residents can um, get more information by calling us at 412-856-7825. They can stop by the center. We're open. Uh, we're doing uh, visitors hours Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. You can visit the municipal website. We're trying to keep that updated. And the most information you can find is definitely on our Facebook page. So um, if anybody has any questions, um, I'm, I'm here to answer them. I have one question, Tara. Yes. With, in regards to the fitness, fitness room, I know there's not a um, fitness coordinator there right now. Right. And um, I know that like a, a month or two ago, um, the mayor had told us that uh, Public Works was moving some of the equipment around to meet the CDC guidelines. So can you not schedule, say, um, someone to work out from like 12 to 1245 on the elliptical number one, and then uh, no one else until for 15 minutes later till you you guys could go in and wipe it down, and then the next person could, could come in. Can you do something like that? Um, I have come up with a draft of how to open the fitness center. There are a lot of restrictions with it. Um, I would prefer to have the person that is going to be in charge of that room be present when we open it because they're the ones who are going to come up with the final decision. They're the ones with the qualifications and the certifications to decide. I don't want to be the one that is completely responsible for that. That person also has to be in the room at all times. Okay. Because of the restrictions of cleaning for COVID. Um, yes, we will be having um, the equipment. Most, it'll be like every other piece will be um, out of order. There will be um, certain weight training pieces that will be off, um, out of use on certain days and other days they'll be open. This is just my, my suggestion on it. I want to work with the person who's going to be hired. I was working with Chris on that, but, you know, we got a, a very short notice of his resignation. Right. Um, but you know as well as I do. You working with Nicole, that everything has to be reservation only. Yes. So, um, anyone who comes into the facility, whether it's for the fitness center or to take a class, they have to make a reservation to be there. So I just recently started working with Nicole's employee, um, Alan, and he's helping us set up an online uh, reservation um, program so that we can do that. Good. All that stuff got holded a little bit when we got the resignation from Chris. Yeah. I couldn't set up any of that until he, that person came in and we decided what the times were going to be, how we were going to space them out, because you have, say... Um, with that square footage, we can have eight people in there at a time. Yeah. And then you have to have a certain amount of time in between each group to clean and disinfect. Right. So, um, I didn't, and same with the classes. I didn't know what classes we were going to teach. I was leaving that up to the fitness coordinator. They knew which ones were the most popular, which ones that needed, which ones needed to come. We can't do them all like we did before. We have to come in slowly. So um, I would, you really need the fitness coordinator present to do all of that. Okay. I was just uh, yep, to do yep. it in the most safe, the safe um, manner. Yeah. Trying to get the seniors back to, to moving, you know, exercise is very important. Well, we're doing all, our, we're doing classes online and they are very well attended right now. Okay, good. The other thing is, you know, the governor and the Department of Health and, and the National Council of Aging, they're telling, they're telling all the senior centers to hold off on on-site um, visits right now. So it's not just me not wanting, I mean, I want to open more than anything. And so does my staff. My part-time staff wants to be back. You know, me and Carol want to get back. We want the seniors to be back, but we also want them to be safe. And we don't want to... Um, hurry into doing that and have somebody come down with becoming ill because we're not prepared and it's only me and Carol. so for us to open with two employees it, and, and do it safely and in the right manner it's just not feasible right now until you know we have everybody all of our full-time 
qualified people, employees there. That's just how I feel we need to proceed with that. Sure, I have a question. It's a little off base. Did you have some construction remodeling going on over there? Is that complete? It is complete. Um, with the new CDC guidelines, no, um, nobody is near a staff area. And the way that the senior center was set up before, we did not have a front, a proper front reception desk. Everyone would go into the main office area where Carol Olson was to sign programs. Um, and that's no longer allowed per the guidelines, um, the COVID guidelines. So what we did was reconstructed the whole front lobby um, so that no one enters the main office anymore. All the registration is done in the main lobby. So that mm -hmm. had actually just completed last week. So that was another reason why things were um, laid back a little bit because we, the constructive parts and the equipment to build the desk area did not come until um, last week. So that's completed. That's why we were able to open on the 10th with the um, on-site services. But until actually last Friday, nothing, it wasn't complete enough for us to be COVID compliant for people to come in. Thank you. Tara, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, have you looked into the, I think it's a peroxide solution, uh, fog distri uh, distribution machine? It looks yes, like we do. We, that is actually back ordered. Um, we have ordered all of the cleaning supplies. Um, we ordered them when the employees came back in July. Um, and quite a few, that's another reason there's I'm jumping all over the place, but there's a lot of reasons why we haven't opened yet. And I didn't mention, but a lot of it is we're waiting for the proper cleaning supplies that we need for the fitness equipment. Um, the fogger is definitely something we're going to use, but there are certain types of wipes that are needed to wipe down the equipment that so that it doesn't get destroyed. You know, a lot of people think that we can just use Clorox wipes. Yes, we can for countertops and, and surfaces like that, but for the fitness equipment, you need to use a specific type of cleaner so that it you know, it doesn't get destroyed. And that has been back ordered until um, I'm being told now August 24th. Um, so, I mean, a lot of things are obviously, you know, like a lot of the fitness centers are, you know, fitness facilities open prior to us. So things have been taken and they're waiting for the new um, allotment to come in. And I'm being told the end of August. So hopefully that crossing my fingers that everything comes at that time so that we're not delayed even further. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tara, one other thing. I really like the idea of the, um, the health screening survey that you sent us. Yes, that's, um, that's required. That was um, a survey that um, the National Council of Aging came out with. Um, I use that as well as um, I use some guidance from the YMCA's, the National JCC Association um, to come up with that because we wanted to make sure everyone understands when they come in that no matter how we clean, there's still risks of coming in right. to use our facility. So when we do open, um, we have made, I, I email that to all of you. Um, it'll be available to the public um, when we get closer to our reopening date because things change and I've changed it a lot based on what the governor um, does and, and changes things. Um, but everyone will receive a new um, policies and procedures booklet. It's pretty extensive. Um, unfortunately, the way that people visited our center um, this time last year will be completely different than how they enter it when we reopen. Um, My question is this, how are you going to have someone who's going to fill this thing out and you're going to keep it on file? And yeah, we're required to keep it on file. Um, they have to fill it out once um, and it goes in the file and then you will see there's a separate sheet. Every time they visit after that, we will have an, there will always be an employee at the front desk uh -huh. area. Um, you guys were approved in this year's budget that we have a part-time employee there. So between 
Carol Olson and that part-time employee. There will always be someone at that desk to assist the people when they're coming in. We will have a health checkpoint there. Um, everyone will be required to fill out that waiver one time. After that, they will be asked the questions verbally from an employee who will then document it in their file. Um, there will be temperature checks at that point. Their reservation will be confirmed, and then they'll be able to go beyond the reception area into the comments. Something, okay. something happened Thank with our microphone. Thank you on that. Yes. Any other questions, Council? No. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. And uh, moving over to our library, uh, we have Nicole Henline here, our director, and uh, it looks like David uh, English is here as well from the board. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving us a couple of minutes. Um, as Tara said, we're under a very different situation. We're under the Department of Education and the Office of Commonwealth Libraries. And with our cleaning supplies and things, we were fortunate that our, we were able to order them as a county. Um, so we're in a little bit of a different position there. But um, we are thrilled to be back and able to offer some of the services that we normally do. Um, and so Eric asked that I put something together to just let you know what's available for your constituents and where we are right now. Um, this presentation was much longer, but um, it included what we were able to do when we had one staff member, when we had three staff members, but I cut it in the interest of time. But if you're interested in any of that information, I'm happy to email it to you. So I'm just going to start with, um, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, yeah. I'm going to start with maybe. Yes, no, we, I can. We can all see it, and also it is on the. Uh, it is being broadcast as well. Okay, so I'm not going to make it a presentation because my computer won't let me. So we'll just okay. scroll. Um, I wanted to start with what your patrons can, what your constituents can do. We have public computers by appointment, and um, we have reference librarians who can help. We actually found software we were really excited about where the librarian can stay at their desk and they can help somebody at a public computer. And so they don't have to be over someone's shoulder and they're able to maintain that social distance. And all of the computers have been moved um, so that nobody is within six feet of anyone else. We also have children's um, and regular material browsing by appointment. And so people can make an appointment by calling or by going online and they can come in for a 45 minute slot for any of those things. Um, for people who maybe aren't comfortable yet coming into the library, we have the option of materials by mail. And so they can fill out a form that tells us what they're interested in. And we send them a few items at a time by mail. They don't have to go to the post office. They just turn over the um, label and their postman can take it right back. And for people who want to, who want books but don't know, or movies and don't know what they want, we have something called book bundles that have been very popular. Um, same idea as the materials by mail where you fill out a form that says what you like, but then we will put together a bag for you and it'll be in our contactless pickup area. So you can come pick it up. Um, and that's one of the other things we're offering. And we have been offering since um, we had three employees in the middle of June and that's contactless pickup. And that's where things are placed in a bag safely. Everyone's wearing masks, hands washed. Um, and then the person's name is put on the bag and they're put out in the gallery space labeled by letters. Um, and we ask people to wear masks when they come in and use hand sanitizer and they can just take their bag of materials and go. They're already checked out. Um, and so that's available to anyone who would like to use it. They can do that by calling, by requesting items online or by requesting items by email. And of course, we have um, electronic resources 24 seven. And for anyone who's interested in them, but they're not sure how to use them. 
Um, we do have our, our librarians standing by during our current open hours and they can help them set those things up. Um, as we were planning to reopen, we were, you know, constantly bombarded with the what if. Um, and so we're very pleased that all of our current services can be safely continued if Allegheny County would go back to the yellow phase. We certainly hope that does not happen, but if it does, there will be a continuity of services for our community. Um, if, goodness forbid, we end up in the red phase, again, we can't continue everything, but we can continue contactless pickup, book bundles, virtual program, books by mail, and virtual reference. So again, not full continuity, but still some continuity of service. Um, the next steps that we're looking at that we would like to implement as is safe and as we're able is to increase our open hours to include evenings and weekends to support more community members. Um, we would like to get back to our normal 67 hours a week. Um, offer assistance with job searching and social services procurement, which we all know is really important for people right now. Um, provide virtual programming to Monroeville residents um, and the requested support to Gateway teachers, students, and families. Support Monroeville parents by providing materials and activities for their children and families, both physically and virtually. We're talking about loaning things that aren't just books, games, manipulatives, things like that. When they come back, of course, they would have to be cleaned and quarantined, but people are looking for more things to be able to do together at home um, since there aren't as many options as normal. Um, and of course, we want to continue the in-person services and contactless options safely. Um, we, we had to let a lot of people know when we started letting people in by appointment, that didn't mean we were doing away with contactless pickup because some people, that is what they're comfortable with, and that is okay. Um, and we do have an hour um, on Mondays that's open for people who are high risk. And so only one person can go into the gallery space at a time. There's extra cleaning, all those kinds of things. Um, Eric asked me to put together a little bit of what we have saved and lost um, during the time that we were closed. Um, of course, with the furloughs, the largest amounts that were saved during the time we were closed was about $80,000 with full-time staff salary and over $70,000 with part-time staff salary. We're also saving money on materials, cleaning. Um, well, we did save on cleaning. They're back since we're here. Um, programs, printing, things like that. Um, and, you know, bottom line, we are trying not to spend any more than we need to to provide the services that our community is asking for um, at this time. So we, the money we have lost um, in May, we were told that we were going to be losing 20% of our regional asset district portion, um, which would, for us, would have been $56,000. We were it was a very happy Monday morning when we found out that that is going to be replaced by the CARES Act um, through the county. So we're keeping an eye on that and hoping that that goes through. Um, the, uh, there's also going to be a change in the formula at the county level that will unfortunately lead to a decrease for us no matter the COVID situation. So we're also keeping an eye on that. Um, the state, state subsidy was level for 2020, mostly because they gave us our money in January. Um, but for next year, we don't really know what they're going to do. As you know, they passed a, a two-part budget. For the first part, the, we did receive five-twelfths of what we received in 2020. So if that continues, we will get everything. If that does not continue, we have a possible loss of $65,000. Um, and as you can see, um, we're losing things like donations, our book sale income, concessions, um, table gaming, of course, because the casinos were closed for that time. Um, trivia night, we can't have our fundraisers, things like that. And we honestly just don't know what's going to happen with RAD. Um, how, you know, this year they cut 20%. We're not sure what next year is going to look like yet. <clears throat> So in general, I just want to thank you for your support 
and ask you to continue it. In the past five years, your support has led to $1.2 million in RAD funding coming into the Monroeville community through the library. And 30% of that was a result of your direct financial contribution. And honestly, all of the RAD money that we receive is because of your support. Without your support, we couldn't do the circulation, we couldn't do the um, computer use and all of that that we get credit for, which gives us more RAD money. Um, so just a reminder that decreases in municipal support do directly decrease county funding on top of any additional RAD losses that might come from COVID or this potential new formula. Um, so that is where we are and what we can offer. And we hope that you know you can visit us soon, what, however you're comfortable, whether it's books by mail, whether it's contactless pickup, or whether it's making an appointment to come visit us in person. Um, and I do, I was asked, Jared um, of TV15 created several beautiful videos to help show people what has changed and what it means when you walk in the library. Because as Tara said, the way they walked in the door a year ago is not the way they can walk in the door today. Um, and so I was asked to show one of those and I would be happy to do that, but I was, if you have any questions first, I would be happy to answer. Yes, before the, the world premiere, if, yeah, if we could, uh, if anyone has any questions for Nicole. I do. I just have I one, do. Nicole. Okay, let's slow down one second, everybody. Uh, I see Mrs. Gatos' hand up here on my screen. Yeah, Nicole, can you take the presentation down first, though, so we can all see each other? Yeah, sorry. Maybe. <laughs> I got myself, uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Is that better? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to guess it's probably still maybe too early um, for you to explain. Um, I'm sure you're working closely with the school district mm -hmm. in regards to their opening, non-opening, well, you know, what you can do to help, you know, our, our parents and students out no matter what happens. So right. maybe if you could just touch on that a little bit. Um, our head of children's, who is the only children's department employee who's working right now, unfortunately, um, has received many requests from teachers um, at the end of last school year when we closed, but we were still working from home. She helped provide some virtual um, support for the teachers. Um, we do a lot with the special ed classrooms, um, providing some of the STEM things that they can do, but then also some virtual book clubs and virtual writing groups. Um, and so right now, we're just trying to figure out what they need and how we can help. Um, so yes, we, we are in talks with them. Um, and right now, we're not quite sure, but we do want to support them and anyone who chooses to educate um, you know, they have a couple options through Gateway. So however we can support families and parents and teachers, we want to. Now, Nicole, so you mentioned you only have one employee in the, in the children's area right now. Mm -hmm. How many employees are currently working at the library? 11. 11 full-time? Yes. Okay, but the, the, you're down one. We're down one this, this week because of uh, surgery. Oh, just, okay, just for, okay, just for a week, though, okay. Yeah, and we were down one two weeks ago because of a scare, so, um, but, yeah, we, 11 is our full-time staff. 11 is your full-time, but, well, it should be 12, though, correct? No, it's 11. So, right now, we have 10. Like, You're as 10. of today, we have 10. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, uh, was there some other questions? Yeah, I have, I have uh, some. Yeah, Mr. Wilson, well, then we'll go to all, Mr. First of all, I'd like to say that, uh, Congratulations, you're doing a wonderful job. As always, uh, you've done a wonderful job. And uh, I'd like to get some advice also. Uh, I have a book from 1960, and where do I turn it in? <laughs> just kidding, you just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can turn it in anywhere. It's, you know, we're, we're fine free now, so. Oh, we that's right, that's you. right, that's right. We won't chase after you. Yes, okay. that was a nice story in the news recently about that, that book. Was. And, well, what was, how long ago was that? How long was it uh, overdue? 43 years to the day. To the day. That, that was the part. That was cool. Hey, to the wonderful. day. 
That was, that was the part that we all thought was very cool. Now, um, I know it was uh, fine free, but did anyone calculate what it would have cost? About $1,500. Um, but that's not how library fines work. But the I news didn't want to hear that. <laughs> I <get> it. <laughs> why? Why? What works is it stops at the cost of the item. And that item only costs $4.35. So, but in story. general, if you had calculated the whole thing, it was $1,500. Mr. Williams, you had a question? Uh, yeah, during the uh, closure, uh, my wife had called and she was sent some books. I don't know if the public realizes, but those books cost about $12 in mailing to mail them to her and for her to mail them back. So the uh, public needs to hold down their mind if they're library supporters. Uh, uh, my wife and I won't be doing that no more. We'll be at the library picking them up to save that $12. Is that the average cost for mailing a book or is some of them more expensive? That's the, that's the average. There's, it's not much more than that. And most people do take advantage of the contactless pickup as opposed to the books by mail. But for some people who really don't have the option to leave the house, um, we do have that option. And it started with a grant. Um, and we just continued it through the, the years. Thank you. Nicole, oh, do you uh, go through the post office for mailing your books? Yes. Okay, because I know personally that they have a special book rate for items like that. Mm -hmm. Just curious about that, okay. Steve, I was hoping you were gonna you know, help us with a connection there, Matt. <laughs> hey, hey, if I could, I would. <laughs> yes, I think one of the email. Yeah, and, and Nicole, thank you again. Is is one to mention the rest of our colleagues and and to Dave. I do ask to help better summarize this because I can't keep track of all of the activities there to to adequately try to explain this piece. But I also can um, cue towards Tim for a little bit of help here in just a second, and that is in regards to um, overall from the you know maybe a thousand foot view of uh, the RAD funding is will hit all of Monroe, well, not just in this case, but also some of the property related things as well, or did you have any feel on that or in general, how the RAD funding impacts Monroe so everybody can get a picture of it? Well, yeah, I'm gonna go over that when I go over the uh, monthly bar chart on the revenues coming in uh, with console. Just the impact of, of it, Tim, just how it, it works. I'm not sure everybody understands that piece. Um, well, it really hasn't. Uh, it really hasn't changed all that much. But I do have some uh, good news when we get to the treasurer's report. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Well, no. Just uh, I, I wanted to explain too that it's it's a, a bit more complicated, and I still have to keep asking, you know, Dave and, and Nicole to explain it to them every now and then. Um, you know, that extra one percent that that you know. Oh, the RAD tax and, and RAD tax okay. and so how. Uh, yeah, that's a formula, and uh, and Nicole can probably explain that a little better than I can. And everybody knows in Allegheny County, you have a, an extra one percent, so it's a total of seven percent tax. And that RAD tax, uh, what they take in, I think they take in around eighty million dollars a year, if I'm not mistaken. And and the and the key thing that I think Nicole uh, strives to explain uh, to the elected officials is that. For as much distribution as we have, people taking out books, videos, and even sharing with other with other uh, libraries, that's the key thing that everybody has to understand. If somebody from the Mount Lebanon Library or or another library that's in the Allegheny County Library system, if they want a book or a video or, or any kind of material that we have that they don't have, that goes towards how much distribution we have and it's also calculated in with the population it's kind of like the way they, they uh, calculate the liquid fuels fund it, it's uh, derived on a, on a couple different variables and that's that's how much red money we get and it's also how much contribution from the local municipality that gives to the library so the less uh, contribution we give the less money we get from red I do okay Nicole what's that I said that I do okay there you did. You did. The library portion of it is very complicated, but if anyone wants to see it, I'm happy to explain it. It's like a six part formula on top of the formula that they use for the whole county. Yeah. And Nicole, can I, can I ask one more, say one more thing? Um, 
I know of an individual that uh, would be willing to volunteer um, as far as delivering library books to people that can't get out to get them. Um, if you would like for me to have them get in touch with you, that may be very helpful um, and it's cost savings to the library. Um, as long as they're a Monroe resident, um, and this person is, yeah. um, they would be willing to take them to some of the people's homes um, to, to help the library and save costs and help someone else that can't get out. That would be lovely. Um, actually, it's one of the, one of my goals for this year before COVID happened um, <laughs> was to increase the volunteer force. Um, and that's one of the things we did at my previous library. It was called Book Buddies. Okay. And it was people taking books to other people. Um, and, you know, it created great relationships and it, um, it just helped people. And well, so... Maybe Maybe this um, will be a good start and maybe other people will be listening to this and think, you know what, I wouldn't mind doing some, something like that. Absolutely. So I, will, I will have this person get in touch with you and I will talk with you later as to who it is. I don't want to say it yeah, no, that's directly okay. in case, you know, um, but I, awesome, right? I, think it, I think it could be a really nice thing. And absolutely, we would, we would love to start a program like that and it only takes one person to start it, so. Thank Very you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Council? No. So, yes, as Nicole uh, mentioned a few moments ago, there has been a, a, a commercial that uh, TV15 has put together. Jared, our, uh, our new uh, TV15 employee, um, who has had nothing but Zoom meetings uh, since he started, but he has uh, produced a commercial, which they're going to also be doing something for the Senior Center whenever they are ready to reopen as well. So. Jared, if you have that um, teed up and ready to go, let's see it. Oh, premiere. You know, if you don't, I do. Longest intro in history. Nicole, if you have it, why don't you go ahead and present it? I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> Nicole, I'm having technical yeah. difficulties. That's okay. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to the library. We are so excited to see you again. Welcome back to the library. We have missed seeing our we are community. So excited and we are so again. glad to be providing you services our once community. more. And we are so Would glad you like to, to use a computer or browse for materials? More. Just make Would a reservation like by visiting our website or giving us a call. Reservations are 45 minutes and are available during our current business hours. We're happy to be welcoming you back inside by appointment, so we wanted to create this video to let you know what to expect when you visit. Are you signed up for a computer? You just turn right and choose one of the open stations. They're stationed at least six feet apart to keep in line with social distancing. If you have questions or need help while you're at work, the reference librarians will be able to help you remotely from their own computer. Okay, I'm gonna start by opening up Microsoft Word for you. We'll bring up a resume template. Be sure to arrive as close to your appointment time as you can. Everyone must leave at the end of a reservation slot. This gives our staff time to sanitize computers and high touch points before the next appointments arrive. And don't forget to wear your mask. To keep our community, our staff, and all visitors safe, masks must be worn at all times in the building. Make sure your mask covers your mouth and your nose, and be sure to stop by the hand sanitizer stations as you enter the building. Are you here to browse? Come on in and look at all the great titles available. Be sure to keep an eye out for the new releases. There are many available in the new books and the bestseller sections. Once you have your items chosen, take them to the circulation desk. For everyone's safety, please keep the plastic divider between yourself and the staff member assisting you. If you have any questions, please just ask. We hope you enjoy your visit and come back to see us again.
Very yeah. nice. Sorry. I was able to stop sharing, but I wasn't able to get it to be quiet. <laughs> Uh, Nicole, I shared I shared that on three different Facebook pages as well as my own, um, just so you know, to try and get out there. But it's very nice. I look forward to the library uh, to the senior centers getting finished. I'm I'm sure it'll be awesome. Jared did a great job. And yeah, he obviously does knows what he's doing. Very good. Yeah. Any yes, other great questions? job, great job, Jared. And uh, yeah, if anyone else has any other questions for Nicole, yeah, very good. Thank um, you so much for your time. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, David. Thank you. Take care. Okay, Council, we're going to move over to our the rest of our citizens night. Um, we have, once again, I mentioned at the top of the meeting, um, being a Zoom meeting, residents have the opportunity to address their concerns by emailing the manager, and we got a handful of them. Uh, all of Council, once again, has received all of these electronically. They have the full content of the emails that were sent in. And also the full emails will be placed in the permanent record with the minutes as well. Um, but I'm going to summarize these, these items as we go through them. So our first uh, comment was from Robert Gordon. Uh, his comments were revolving around pedestrians on Old Way and Penn Highway and how it can be a dangerous situation. That uh, sidewalks are, are very expensive in that area that uh, he suggested more traffic citations in the area. And uh, he also spoke further about Old William Penn, that there was an area where um, there's water runoff, which will freeze in the wintertime. And uh, he wanted us to look into that as well and for that to be addressed. So a couple things, the um, pedestrians on Old William Penn, I mean, we've, we have certainly covered this in our active transportation plan out of our comp joint comprehensive plan with Wilkins and Churchill. As everyone can guess, there's been a lot of things that have been placed on hold due to COVID-19 as far as cost savings go. But this is definitely an area that we would definitely like. I mean, I'm definitely an advocate for trying to improve pedestrian access and bicycle access to the best of our ability. We want things to be safe for people. And that would be a targeted area to look at. Um, as far as uh, people speeding on the road, that is certainly something that we can have the police department uh, keep an eye on that stretch of road more frequently and maybe spike some people in that area to try to slow them down. And as in regards to the, uh, the water runoff, that is the area that he described, which is uh, down the hill um, from, from Beatty uh, and downward by the stop sign. The sources of it is from a natural spring that, that comes out onto the road. As of now, it's been pretty dry, so that is not happening. But uh, Public Works and the MS4 department um, will be evaluating that to see if we have to do any other extra kind of drainage in that area. But certainly, wintertime when these things happen, we, we send salt crews out. They monitor it very closely. They'll dump extra salt in that area if there is water cascading over the road. But Public Works is going to be looking into that area as well to see if any additional piping needs to be done. So, Eric, can I make a quick comment on this? Yeah, so that summarizes um, Mr. Gordon's um, comment. And Mr. Harvey, go ahead. Since uh, Mr. Gordon had sent that to us, I have talked to the chief of police as early as yesterday, uh, who has special details out there in the municipality right now doing stop signs. And he assured me <clears throat> that he would have a speed detail over there, if not right in Mr. Gordon's driveway. So uh, that's going to be happening very soon. Yeah, excellent. I mean, we, we certainly don't want to tip people off, but uh, you've been warned. I mean, please watch your speed. Um, be careful around stop signs. We've had a lot of complaints about stop signs in Garden City that people are uh, barely slowing down for. So please stop at stop signs. Watch your speed limits. Uh, you know, kids are still out and about. School's going to be starting soon. It, it, it adds for a dangerous situation for uh, people outside, pedestrians, bicyclists, and uh, the whole community. So uh, thanks, the, Mr. Harvey. The one, the one thing the chief wanted me to remind you of, and this is kind of maybe something I shouldn't say, but, you know, the Pennsylvania state law, the police don't have radar. And so the devices they use, they have to give 10 miles an hour. So the speed limit on Mobley and Penn is 35, and uh, they have to give to 45 uh, without a violation. So they can't write until 46. So, I, you know, it's the way it is. It's the law. Right, but same thing. People need to slow down. 
Uh, another comment we had, um, two comments were revolving around the same matter, but uh, one comment from Reverend Scott Gallagher from the Garden City United Methodist Church. He was re referencing the ordinance that we're considering this evening of amending ordinance 2689, which is to reduce or uh, to remove the 25% discount granted to houses of worship for 2021. Uh, Reverend Gallagher goes on to, to talk about the financial difficulties in the midst of the COVID pandemic, certainly as everyone is experiencing and the houses of worship are as well, and that the, the houses of worship have uh, as fixed expenses and anything above that, they place back into the community. If they, you know, they have their food pantry that a lot of uh, the different churches and houses of worship take place in. Uh, they have their rent assistance program their utility assistance program, and all of this, um, any increase that they have to spend on anything, uh, that's going to diminish the kind of programming that they can provide and they want to provide in our community. And he stresses that there will be a, an increased need for these services as the COVID pandemic moves forward. So Reverend Gallagher is encouraging us not to rescind the 25% discount. He does not want us to adopt the ordinance. And on the, in the same same vein, we also had a comment from Wendy Grace. She is the chair of financial ministries at the Monroeville United Methodist Church, um, otherwise known as MUM. And she essentially reiterated the same the same comments. Does not want us to do away with the discount and not adopt the ordinance this evening. And she also has the same uh, same concerns about the finances and that money that goes back into the community. They do the same things. They're involved with the food pantry, but they also have a you know, community park service, educational programs, a preschool, and senior services that they would like to continue to do. So, uh, once again, she is Wendy is asking that we do not amend that ordinance, which we are considering this evening. Another comment we received was from a uh, Brian Beauty, or Booty rather. Uh, he. Sent an, email, uh, uh, an extensive email and description of excessive wild animal feeding that's occurring on Sweet Leaf Drive. Uh, there is, um, we have recently caught approximately 50 raccoons at this property. This is in a residential area. Um, so th this, this, is, this is a problem that we are going to look into. Our animal control officer is going to be working with code enforcement as well and speaking with Mr. Ratcher that uh, we, we more than likely have enough tools in the municipality to, to take care of this. However, uh, we may need to look into adopting some other legislation. Uh, Mr. Little was looking into that from some other communities, what they have used. I know the, the state uh, warden was involved with this as well, and we're looking into all this, but uh, to Brian, we are definitely looking into the situation. We appreciate you bringing it to our attention. And like I said, we'll start with our in-house tools that we have. We are very well aware of it now. St the staff's aware of it. And uh, it, But if we need, if council needs to move forward on some legislation, uh, we'll do so to, to clear this up. And uh, once again, council has all this, all this information as well. And I believe that is, that's all we have for the public comments that we received this evening. Uh, so I'm gonna close our citizens night and we're gonna move over to our regular council meeting. And just to be clear, uh, the not only was that considered citizens night, but that was also considered public comment on proposed agenda items only, which we did receive a few in the, the bunch I just read. So. Council, we have our minutes from Citizens Night of July 14th, the council work session of um, which was combined with the July meeting and the regular council meeting of July 14th as well. So council, you've received all these minutes. Does anyone have any uh, comments or questions about this or any additions? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second to approve. Roll call, please. Mrs. Dados? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? 
Mr. Harvey? You did, Ron. Sorry, aye. Thank you, Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Or did you get to Mr. William, Mr. Wilson? I'm sorry, that cut you off. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, I didn't get him. I'm sorry. I'm hiding over here, Sam. Aye. <laughs> To make sure that that vote Sorry. counts, Mr. Wilson. Your vote yes, counts. it does. It does. The eyes do have it. Thank you, uh, Council. Our tax collections this month. Do I have a motion to approve them? Motion. We move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion is second. Thank you so much. Any comments or questions about the tax collections? Mayor, I, I would like to bring just an aspect of the treasurer's report uh, to Council's attention. Go ahead. Uh, after my conversation with the uh, tax office uh, last week, as everybody knows, and, and most of the public knows, council extended the uh, business and mercantile tax collection to July 15th to follow along suit with the Commonwealth and the federal government with uh, the tax deadline. And that was July 15th. So our tax collection re report reflects uh, the um, reconciliation of businesses uh, filing their mercantile tax and uh, business privilege tax. If council uh, can see, I don't have this. Uh, it I tried to put this as a share screen so the public could see it, but it was uh, it was on a horizontal fashion. But it, as council can see on mercantile tax, um, we have. Um, collected approximately 98%, or excuse me, business tax, no, mercantile, 98% of our uh, mercantile tax. On our, on our business tax, um, we have collected approximately 92% um, 92, 92%, 92%, excuse me, for the business and for the mercantile, 98%. So that is way better than I anticipated in discussing uh, with council because we thought because of the business environment uh, in Monroeville and even across the nation, uh, maybe some of the businesses would not be able to pay. But as the caution is, next year uh, may not be as good because of obviously the gross receipts uh, for this year. Next year will be based on this year. I just wanted to bring that to council's attention. Thank you. Mr. Little. Go, yes. Go ahead, I Mr. Just, Arsenko. No, I just wanted to make everybody aware, and I think you, you kind of touched on it, but the, the collection for the mercantile business that we did collect is from the 2019 year. I think that Correct. needs to be clear. It's based on their gross that. receipts. Yes. That's yes, all. It's based, yes, exactly. It's based on gross receipts. So, yes, there is going to be. A re well, there's a potentially going to be a reduction in it next year because of the gross receipts being decreased during the COVID pandemic and the shutdown. Correct. Uh, however, however, there are definitely some businesses that were that were that saw an increase in business. Um, you know, it's probably not going to be a, a washout, that's for sure. But we're we're definitely going to be down. But uh, we do have to wait and see for those numbers for next year. Amen. So we have a. Sam, I have a question, please. Mr. Wilson, go ahead. Uh, my question is, do we have uh, any uh, opportunities to receive some federal uh, funding uh, from some of these new programs that they're, that they're putting in? Yeah, we're, 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 we will be applying. We will be receiving, most likely, uh, $225,000 from the CARES Act. That's, that's uh, federal money through the county. And we are putting together... Uh, all the receipts uh, for that. Now, most of that, if not all of that, I would have to say at this point would be the police uh, salaries and fringe benefits from March 1st uh, through um, July 31st. And obviously uh, $225,000 would not be much to accumulate uh, there. The $225,000 is based on our population. Uh, and uh, I don't have that uh, chart in front of me on what the population is. Obviously, the smaller the population, the less money. But we're entitled to $225,000, and I feel very confident that we will receive that. In addition, the Pima Pennsylvania Emergency Management Association, uh, we will be receiving money on that, I would believe. We have not submitted for that. That 
we're going to put in things for the public works overtime coming in and cleaning the building every Wednesday evenings. That's overtime. Uh, the custodian of the municipal building coming in on the weekends and cleaning the jail cells if we have uh, a perpetrator that has to be kept overnight or even for a couple hours uh, in the jail cells. All the PPEs, masks, sanitizing um, equipment that we've bought, uh, that all will be put in uh, under Pima because we're, we're going to utilize the uh, CARES, the CARES Act grant for the uh, police salaries. And the reason you can do that for the police, they are considered under the CDC, and they're considered essential employees. I mean, the public works employees also are considered essential employees, uh, but so we can submit their salaries, uh, just them working a normal day on their shifts for that grant. Uh, if I may, if Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, just when I get my report, I'm going to do a kind of a brief report on the um, Commonwealth budget and also on the Federal CARES Act. Uh, they call it the Coronas Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. I'll give a report on that at, when I do my report. Very good. So, Council, we still have on the floor a motion and a second to approve the tax collections. Any other questions about the tax collections? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Osinko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Thank you. The ayes have it. Council, list of bills and budget transfers. Is there a motion to approve? No motion. motion. Second. second for Mr. Arsenko. Mr. Harvey, is that a second? Yes. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions, Council? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. And the payroll report, Council, is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Oh, yeah, I hear a motion and a second. Uh, is there is there any a comment or questions about the payroll? Yes, sir. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Osinko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. The ayes have it. Council, we're going to move over to our vacancies on boards, commissions, and authorities in your packet. Pardon me while I change screens to get that. Mr. Wilson, do you have anything uh, to say anything for your. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Williams. Nothing. Mr. Arasinko. Nothing, Mayor. Mr. Wolfram. I have nothing right now, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Harvey. Yes, uh, last month we nominated uh, Luann O'Neill to uh, take the place of a, a spot of a resignation on the Police Civil Service Commission. I'd like to make a motion for appointment. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Harvey, anything else? No, sir. Mr. Poach? No, sir. Mrs. Gatos? I have nothing. Thank you. Very good. Council, moving over to our new business, our consent agenda new business in your packet. We're looking at 20 uh, 3 ST Lodovico and Associates PC. Mr. Little, if you would, please. Yes, the uh, applicant is requesting a site plan approval to construct a 5,007 foot square foot building to be used as an office building on property zone C2 business commercial. The property is currently a vacant lot located at the intersection of Route 22, Warren Penn Highway and Plaza Drive and known as tax parcel 1244L72. The Planning Commission uh, recommends approval. I believe we do have Mr. Gusty here uh, representing the uh, applicant. Uh, Mr. Gusty, do you have... Um, yes, I'm, here. I'm here. Hi, Ray. Welcome to the meeting. 
Uh, Let's make a motion to approve. Mo second. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. second? second. We have a motion to second. Any comments, any questions for Mr. Gosti? Yeah. No. I believe this site is where there was, uh, at, at the very end of Monroeville, uh, I believe a few, several months back, there was a car wash that was approved to be on there. Um, That's correct. So, uh, so is, is it my correct in saying that the car wash isn't happening anymore and this building is? Yes. I believe that's the same car wash that was put in in Wilkins, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yeah, you're On right. Near the oh, Texas oh, Road House. Penn, Penn Center. Penn Center, correct. And right now we don't have any, um, we have any images. Okay, there we go. Thank you. The site plan image. I think we're good, Mr. Mayor. We had a motion and a second to approve. Yeah, I just wanted to orient myself here on the map and uh, for the public, they're watching at home. So yes, this is out of the, uh, I think, Murray's View Plaza up near the Wendy's. Um, does someone have, a, someone has a cursor there that can move it around? Mm -hmm. Yeah, show them where 22 is. And then the exit of the plaza and the building will be right there. Okay, very good. So we do have a motion and a second to approve. Any other comments, Council? I have a question, Mayor. Mr. Approach, go ahead. Right. Um, Ray, I, I know this is all, it just happened to be familiar with this area. It's been in contention for a number of years and different pieces of it, too. Is there any issues? Uh, is part, is, am I reading this correctly? Part of the buildings in Murraysville? Uh, there's, a, there's a small triangular piece. You can see on the drawing the, the line of uh, Murraysville and Monroeville line, so there's a very small piece of the building in Murraysville, but 99% uh, of it's in Monroeville. Okay, and you have that all confirmed. Um, we've run into issues over the years, that particular part, including when it was a drive-in movie theater. They couldn't decide which part was, uh, was both. Uh, everyone had uh, an equal um, <clears throat> chance and complaint about that as well, so it's cleared up for you in, in both counties, I hope? Yes. Good to hear. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and uh, yes, and I believe actually this is, I believe what they're showing here, the there's less of the building in Murraysville as what was approved with the car wash. I think there was more of a, right. more of a split uh, from what I recall. But at any rate, it uh, looks like a good project. Uh, and the Planning Commission does approve this as well. They rec or, I'm sorry, they recommend approval. So we have a motion a second to approve. Is there a roll call please? Mrs. Jados? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Rosenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Right, thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. See you thank again. You. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Council, moving over to our next item, 20-1-C uh, exposure billboards. This item, we will not be voting on tonight. The applicant has uh, pulled this application. That's correct, Mr. Little? Yes, it is. Just this afternoon, he sent an email about 3 o'clock saying that he is withdrawing his application. And this was a project that the Planning Commission recommended denial as well. Mr. Ratcher, do we just not act or vote? What's best? Do we have anything in writing from the applicant? Yes, we have an email. Okay. We're, I'm, I would recommend accepting the withdrawal. Vote to accept the withdrawal. Okay. Motion to accept withdrawal. Second. 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 We have a motion and a second to accept the withdrawal from the applicant of 20-1-2. <coughs> Any further comments, Council? Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Arasenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Jados? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. The uh, council, moving over to our motions this evening, we have one motion. Mr. Little? Yeah, this is a motion uh, to enter into an agreement with the Cohen Law Group to review and negotiate a Verizon small wireless communication facilities master license agreement not to exceed $3,750. Uh, 
and if needed to prepare amendments to the existing small wireless communications ordinance and design guidelines not to exceed $5,000. Any additional consulting work will be performed at the hourly rate of $250. This is the little small presentation I gave last week to council uh, concerning what the uh, FCC has regulated going back to 2019. I showed council a picture of um, the small wireless antennas that would most likely be, uh, could be co-located on, co on buildings. Uh, they could be co-located on top of telephone poles. We have about four or five similar ones uh, in the uh, municipality now, uh, but there's uh, certain provisions that have changed in the FCC rulings and the Cohen Law Group would uh, recommend that we update our 2015 ordinance uh, on this. Motion I would like to make a motion, Mayor, to approve this because as uh, previously stated, and I think Mr. Ratcher said it also, if we don't get this changed before applications start coming in, we might have to accept them the way it is. So I'd like to make a motion to approve. I'll second this expenditure. that. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any other comments, Council? No. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Urcinko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. Council, moving over to our resolutions. We have one resolution this evening. Mr. Little. Yeah, this is uh, the same resolution we had on last month. It's just that there was a, uh, a small clerical error where my name was put in the mayor's uh, and it's confusing on the resolution and they kicked mm -hmm. it back to Mr. Hugus. And so we just have to, you know, readopt it. Uh, it's for the department. Oh, I'll read a resolution authorizing Timothy J. Little to sign the attached agreement between the municipality of Monroeville and the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation to participate in the engineering and construction management system. This is just to give data and information uh, to PennDOT. Second. Motion second to approve. Any comments, Council? Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Ursenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Council moving over to our ordinances, this e our ordinances this evening. Mr. Ratcher, there's two of them. First ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, establishing certain requirements for the connection of all occupied buildings and structures to sanitary sewers, and further establishing additional rules and regulations regarding inspection, testing, and permitting pursuant to the Pennsylvania Sewage Facilities Act for properties located within the geographic area of the municipality of Monroeville, which is served by the Franklin Township Municipal Sanitary Authority. Um, just a few comments on this. This is more or less a, a housekeeping item or some required legislation that we have to pass. The background is this. Um, this has already been adopted in most of Monroeville, a small portion of the eastern part of Monroeville. Um, our sewers don't go to Elkison, they go to the Franklin Township Municipal Sanitary Authority, which is called FPMSA by everybody. FPMSA is currently negotiating for all the communities in Westmoreland County it services and the small part of Allegheny County in Monroeville, which it services. Um, they're negotiating a consent agreement to comply with the wet weather guidelines and other uh, regulations of the DEP. So, as part of that consent decree, all of the consumers of FDMSA, of which Monroeville is one small area, have to pass legislation like this and send it on to the DEP as a condition of the consent decree. So this is really what we already do and have done for many years. Um, FDMSA is getting to the ball game a little later than we did. We were probably doing all this stuff eight, ten years ago. But, but that's the purpose of the ordinance. Would the, the municipal authority have to do anything with this as well, Mr. Ratcher? No, because it uh, it, it doesn't. They it's a separate system. Okay. It, it goes it goes to um, it goes to Westmoreland County to FDMSA. It's not hooked into the rest of our system. If it were, then they would have that. Okay. Thank you. 
So I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions, Council? No. And yes, both of the, these items with this and what Alcasan is planning to do in the future, these are huge undertakings for the region and very expensive, but long-term going to be very good for the health and well-being of the entire uh, region. So uh, we have a motion second to approve. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arasenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Ratcher, second ordinance. Next ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, amending ordinance number 2689 to rescind the pollution control and flood reduction fee discount for certain religious institutions to be affected for the year 2021 and subsequent years. This is the matter that was discussed earlier um, and Motion commented to table. on during public comment. Motion to table. Okay. We have a motion and a second to table. There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Your vote is strictly to agree or disagree to accept or decline the tabling of this item. So if you vote in the affirmative, you are tabling this item, which means that we will not be taking action until the next regular council meeting in September. So we have a motion and a second to table. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. I uh, agree to the table. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. The ordinance is tabled until September's meeting. And Mr. Ratcher, while we have you there, uh, do you have any, uh, any other reports to give for this evening? I do not, unless there are questions for me. Council, any questions for Mr. Ratcher at this time? No, sir. No, sir. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Little, moving over to you during for our reports of our municipal staff. You had some financial information to give us? Yes. Uh, as everybody can see, uh, I hope you can see the, uh, the horizontal bar chart that I have uh, shown to Council and the public uh, for the last three months of where our revenue is, and this is uh, due to the pandemic and the possibility of the lack of uh, revenue. Now, the reason why I went over the treasurer's report uh, and, and specifically uh, picked out the uh, mercantile and business privilege tax, that's not gonna reflect here because up here, this, this report is June through June, June of last year through in comparison to June, June of 20. And these have been a month behind because when we get the reports of the revenue coming in from the different um, sources and mostly uh, the tax, well, not mostly the tax office, but the tax office, the real estate, the LST tax, and we get the um, wage tax from uh, Keystone and you get the RAD tax from the county. Um, Josie Rock, our finance director, she has to uh, post it in uh, to the uh, software system and she has to reconcile it. So that takes a little bit of time. So this is always somewhat of a month uh, behind, but I wanted to show you about the business and mercantile tax uh, as of the end of July. But getting to this, you can see the building permits. And as I mentioned last month, and like, you can see the building permits for 2020, which is the red bar, which is down. Regional asset tax, which is actually up, which is somewhat surprising there. Uh, the real estate transfer tax, which is about regular as it has been with the last three years. And this is the one I've been watching uh, and will continue to watch throughout the uh, 2020. Uh, the wage tax, which isn't as, as down as I thought it would be, so that's good. The LST, which is a $52 tax that everybody has, we get $45 and the school district gets $7. That's about in line as it has been in previous years. This is actually where we were at the end of June with the uh, business tax and the mercantile tax. And as I showed you with the treasurer's tax, this is going to be, when you see this bar chart next month, it's going to be way up around here, which is very good news. Our current real estate tax is a little bit behind. 
I don't know if that is due to the pandemic because real estate tax sometimes does fall behind and then people are late and it, it gets, and you really can't put a, um, a, a lien or anything on their property until the end of the year. And I'm hoping that this little gap right here will be, uh, will be shored up, so to speak, in the next month or two. And so we're kind of equal. We usually take in, well, we usually take in about 9 million or around 9 million, or pretty close to 9 million every year. Um, so that's the report on our uh, revenue trends uh, for this month. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me? No. Okay, that's all I, that's all I have except one comment that I, I did want to uh, make. Um, we had um, last Friday when our parking lot here in the municipal building was milled. Uh, the millings, when everything was taken up beginning last Thursday and especially on Friday, there were a lot of spots, way more, a vast majority of spots that really didn't have any underlayment. And that caused the Public Works Department to come out in full force and uh, cut out those spots, square them up, and put in number two stone. And our Public Works Department um, worked uh, Friday night. Uh, and I give uh, Paul Hugus and Jamie Story a lot of credit for uh, shoring that up because it was a real mess out here. And I'm sure a lot of council members saw that. And a lot of the public saw that we had to close the municipal building down at two o'clock uh, so these guys could work uh, uninhibited and i just want to give a lot of credit and hats off to paul and jamie for doing a great job tim could you lower the chart pardon me could you get rid of the bar graph so we could see all the council members oh, yeah again? sure yeah sure no problem uh, yeah nice job tim and yes exactly the the kudos are well said for what they did in the parking lot. Yes, they, anytime, any kind of construction, you start, you know, tearing things back or opening things up, you don't know what's underneath or what's behind the walls. And they certainly found a mess and uh, did an excellent job getting it all fixed up. So thanks for mentioning that, Tim. So council, I'll move, move over to your reports, Mrs. Gatos. Uh, yes, I will start out with thanking uh, Tara and Nicole for um, taking the time to spend with us this evening, giving the public some updates on what's going on within their facilities. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, we can't, we can't do it in the words that they can as they are there daily and we are not. So I appreciated their time. And I think our public probably does too. And uh, maybe they'd feel a little more comfortable now getting in touch with those particular facilities. So thank you ladies for that. Um, a reminder that August 29th is the Jack Sedlak cleanup day. Even though there won't be a picnic afterwards, they still have prizes in that to give out. So if you have not already, um, go on our website and um, participate in that. Um, also, uh, my husband walks every morning and um, he, watches, he watches the garbage men and he told me to thank Mr. Yugas and his crew uh, for the amazing job as he watched those guys pick up garbage. He said it, it's, it's really something to see um, how well oiled that machine is of uh, the duties that they perform. So I would like to thank our public works, uh, the garbage crew and uh, Mr. Yugas for the fine job that they are doing. Other than that, I'm glad. Uh, Mike Strom that's in charge of the garbage. Oh, okay, and Mike Strom for in charge of the garbage um, and also I'm happy to see everybody which means that everybody here is healthy and um, I hope that we all stay that way and hopefully next month we can appear in public oh and, and happy anniversary to my parents their 62nd anniversary was yesterday bless. Oh, bless. So. Bless. Wow. oh and happy birthday to myself at the end of the month there we go that's it <laughs> <laughs> anything else Mrs. Gatos that's all thank you all right Mr. Poach uh, well, to, again, echo what Linda had to say. I appreciate everybody's reports coming in this evening. It's certainly helpful and glad to see that all our, those programs are getting back to normal and, and can move forward with it. Uh, take two seconds to thank everybody, you know, all our colleagues, again, to, to come you know, to meet in this fashion, a Zoom meeting. It's always a difficult decision uh, as time moves forward. I anticipated some great, better information today and, and information I was on a call with the state uh, stuff and the information is eh, 
it's not gotten bad, but it's not stopping uh, in terms of information. That's a very short version of a long report from the state epidemiologist as well. And, and you look at you know, the cases we've had in Monroeville, I think as of today are about 211 that have been ongoing uh, too. So it's, it's happened again. It's certainly, I sit here and, and do the math and it goes back to who's the, the number one group that we had in place. And it's certainly been uh, those between um, that have had fatalities have been over 70 uh, years of age uh, as well. But 83% of those cases, uh, I'm sorry, 66% of the cases have been people between the ages of, of 20 and 49, uh, you know, to, to spread it to. So we'll see how it all moves forward, uh, keep track of it. I just beg the public uh, indulgence as we move forward, try to continue to conduct business with it because in this very, very um, contentious time and changes, uh, hopefully we'll smooth out in the next few weeks and we'll see how things go after schools open. Uh, other than that, um, again, thanks to all the public works folks, the guys that are out there all the time, the, the law enforcement guys, the, the police department doing a terrific job out there. And uh, of course, uh, my colleagues in fire and EMS have been handling those cases, seeing people uh, in person uh, and seeing some of those folks that handle it and have uh, got through up relatively unscathed uh, in terms of the hard work they're doing. Everything takes twice as long nowadays, just so everyone knows. I can tell you that personally in terms of uh, working a little bit last month, and it's a lot a lot more difficult than, than even I imagined it would be out in the field too, so please give me credit to do that. Other than that, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Poach. Mr. Harvey. Uh, <clears throat> basically, want to reiterate thanking the department heads for being here uh, on the Zoom meeting, so we had an opportunity to ask questions, obviously, we can't ask questions of a written report. So it was nice and uh, that they were here. The only other thing I have is, is that all of us know, but I don't think the public knows that these Zoom meetings uh, <clears throat> and our advice on doing them uh, come from one of our council members, Eric Poach. And I wanna thank him for that because it's his profession and he works for the health, health uh, system in Pittsburgh and uh, he is up on this stuff. And we basically hate him when he when he tells us we have to have a Zoom meeting, but he's doing the right thing. And uh, so uh, I wanted to thank Eric and I wanted to let the public know what his work does. So thank you, Mr. Poach. Appreciate it. Pretty good, Mr. Harvey, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Harvey, You're, that's good? That's it. Uh, one more thing, Nick, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I wanna remind the public that we are gonna be having a fireworks display the um, Sunday before uh, Labor Day. It's gonna be at the Monroeville Mall at 9.30. Uh, there will be no parade this year due to the COVID, but we are still pressing forward with the fireworks and hope to really put on one heck of a big display. And um, once again, I would like to thank JJ and the uh, crew for you know their work at getting this put together. So uh, just a reminder, um, the Sunday before Labor Day. So thank you. Very good. And uh, Mr. Wolfram. Um, mine is very easy. Everything that Linda just said was on my notes. So uh, all I can say is just ditto. Um, and again, I want to reiterate about the uh, men who pick up all the rubbish and stuff like that. They do one great job. I've watched them myself because uh, I, I got up early in the morning when I was still working at the post office, stuff like that. And I haven't seen the stuff that they were doing. And they're just phenomenal people. And again, so uh, I just hope everybody stays safe. Uh, including ourselves as we can see each other we're still good uh, and the other people out in the public um, just uh, maintain the distance and wash their hands and do what they're supposed to do other than that thank you mayor thank you mr wolfram mr arasinko yeah if everybody will bear with me i do have a couple of things i'd like to bring up but first i definitely want to thank tara and nicole they were good reports i know council got most of that on their emails i think it was excellent for the residents that were tuning in Obviously, thanks to uh, Public Works for doing a great job always. And uh, a couple of things I've wanted uh, that I've been involved in. Uh, you may, uh, the public may not know, July 14th, uh, County Council uh, took up the non lethal weapon ban and it was defeated by a vote of 12 to 3. I, along with other elected officials, um, certainly uh, gave strong opposition to that. They were also considering the Civilian Police Review Board. As you all know, our Chief Cole does not support that, uh, and that, that 
is being considered by county council once again. And just so everybody knows, I've been meeting with a lot of the chiefs throughout the county and uh, none of them that I've spoke to personally are in favor of that as everybody, if you don't know, uh, county council does not have the authority to impose that countywide. That would only affect the Allegheny County Police Department and all the chiefs are supporting uh, them to not get that passed. So I'll be down there again and again with other elected officials uh, with strong opposition on that. We should always support our men and women in blue. And uh, the reason why uh, I don't uh, agree with the Civilian Police Review Board is, is that, think about this, if they have an officer, officer step out of line, they have the chief of police that can deal with that. They also have the mayor, council, district attorney, state attorney general, as well as the court uh, system. I don't know how many more checks and balances our men and women in blue need. I think that's just a, a level of government we don't need. And, Obviously, the cost involved of a civilian police review board is very high. I'm going to give you a real quick uh, update on the, um, as you all know, I sit on PSAB, the Pennsylvania State Bros Association, a uh, real quick update on the uh, Commonwealth budget. And we did touch on it a little bit, but uh, as, the, as the pandemic uh, rolled in, it was a very lively uh, debate. Uh, in both chambers, uh, and they chose to address vital spending issues through an interim budget uh, measure. It signed into law as Act 180, 1A rather, I'm sorry, by Governor Wolf, House Bill 2387 provides a temporary budget to the fund for the Commonwealth on a five-month basis until the final impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic becomes clear. The plan uh, totaled 26 billion in spending with approximately 42% of most line items based on the FY 2019-22 spending levels. A number, uh, a limited number of other lines will receive increases due to increased expenses uh, such as pensions and the debt. Federal allocations uh, were provided for the full year. The temporary budget provides some continuity over the short term, while the broader impacts of the pandemic and Pennsylvania's disaster response continue to take shape. However, the full physical picture remains to be seen, and there are no promises of flat or increase for the remaining seven months of the FY 2020-21 budget. Thus, when the General Assembly returns to the negotiations, expected later this fall. The final budget could present a different overall picture and level funding for the full year is not guaranteed. So caution to not just us, every other municipality uh, or borough listening for FY 2020, 2021 is incomplete. Be, uh, be encouraged to remain cautious in monitoring expenses in case cuts occurred from the remaining budget. Now on the Federal CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, allocations for the Federal CARES Act funding were also signed into law as Act 24 in late May. Seven, Senate Bill 1108, Act 2A of 2020, allocates 2.6 billion for Pennsylvania's 3.9 in billion in CARES Act dollars. This includes $625 million to 60 counties that did not pre previously receive district federal CARES funds. Community and Economic Development, DEC, and then, uh, or, I'm sorry, the funding will be distributed through a county block grant program housed in the DEC, DEC, yeah, DCED and then divided amongst the counties based on population with a $1 million minimum amount per county. So I guess what I'm saying is that for the budget for us, uh, anything that we do for, receive from the state, we should be very cautious. And it looks like, Tim, you hit the nail on the head. 2021 is going to be a challenge for us when we'll be dealing with that in a few months. And with that, thank you for your time. 
Very good. Thank you for the update, Mr. Arisenko. Mr. Williams. Yes. Uh, the public needs to know I have a deep concern for businesses in Monroeville. Uh, we need to remember that our taxes, our, our bar taxes are low because of the businesses we have in Monroeville. So I suggest whenever possible, shop our Monroeville businesses. Uh, I have some other concern. Uh, let me start with the Monroeville Mall. And I have a couple of slides here. Uh, maybe, let's see if I can get that on. Well, I'll just read it to you. Uh, transforming abandoned malls with apartments, hotels, and more. And then some of the other malls, uh, Amazon and mall operator, uh, look at turning Sears, J.C. Penney's, and other stores in the fulfillment centers, which are uh, supplying a need to people. They make orders, they put these orders together and send them out. Uh, Monroeville Mall and other large uh, complexes is a concern. Thinking of the U.S. Steel Research Center, Coppers and University Park, John F. Plaza, uh, Miracle Mile Shopping Center, and other large complexes. I believe these should be changed to mixed use properties. Uh, then they can incorporate schools, medical offices, uh, senior and apartment living, gyms, grocery stores, hotels, and many other things. Um, this brings me to the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Uh, we've been working on this probably to 10 to 12 years back when I was on a planning commission, we worked on it for two and a half years. At this time, uh, we need to get it done. So I am uh, <clears throat> making a motion to council direct the manager to fast track the comprehensive zoning ordinance so we can get it done. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, fast track this comprehensive zoning ordinance. If I could just speak on this in one moment. Um, so yes, Mr. Williams, yes, has been worked on quite a bit. He brought up some great points. And yes, I believe that our, our zoning ordinance could definitely be improved to allow some more flexibility for some of these developments and to be more modernized. I'm not sure if, and may this is a question for Mr. Little. Uh, I know I've, I spoke with Mr. Ratcher about this in the past. If this is something that we should do internally to move forward, or if we are, if our ordinance is at the status where we should actually have a consultant uh, come in and, 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 and do this. So, well, Mr. Little. Yeah, I, well, obviously for the, the sake of uh, time, I mean, having an outside consultant do it uh, would expedite it, uh, but that obviously costs money. Uh, we are at the, uh, I, would, I don't know if we're at the tail end of it, but I know this, this ordinance was at the planning commission level uh, in 2013. And it has lied fallow uh, that for that long, uh, obviously because you you begin doing uh, daily work and long range projects like that they take time. But Mr. Williams is is correct, uh, and so he has talked to me the last two months on this issue. We had our initial meeting with uh, Mr. Ratcher, me, Mr. Yugas, and Mr. Wilden, our planner and zoning officer. And what we have decided to do is uh, Paul Wilden is going to be working on certain sections and then we're going to get together one each each month and we're going to uh, it has to go back to the planning commission because it's uh, been too too much time that it hasn't been in front of them then it has to go to Allegheny County uh, planning and it has to be approved there and then once all that is done it'll, it'll get in, in council's hands um, that's going to take a little bit of time, uh, but I, it, just for the sake of saving money, I would say we do it in house unless council thinks otherwise. Well, if it was done, if it was done as a consultant, do we have any idea, a, a guesstimate on what kind of money we're talking about? And also too, is there an advantage to outsourcing it to a, a consultant group that, that does this on a national basis to, um, I mean, obviously our staff is very capable of doing these things, but it, is their time spent better somewhere else with their, within the municipality? So, uh, but it, Mr. It, Wilden it, has been working on this though. That's what he was doing the whole time for the last months. 
uh, Mr. Little, correct? Yeah, when we had our one uh, Zoom meeting back in April, uh, the question came up about this project, uh, Paul Wilden uh, doing this project when things were uh, shut down. Things have obviously uh, cropped back up again uh, with building permits, with zoning issues, and things of that nature. And he has and he has worked on it during that time back in April and May when the municipal building was uh, closed down. We weren't getting any building permits uh, in or zoning issues and, and plans weren't coming in like we had we had one plan we approved this evening. Uh, but he is working on it now in a piecemeal fashion. And what, what and also with the winter coming up, won't that kind of probably free him up a little sure. bit more to continue working? So maybe sure. we could look at this again. I, I don't really want to go and spend more money on another consultant when we have someone in-house that is currently working on it. Sure. My yeah. opinion. No, it's good. Mr. Ratcher, do you have any comments on this? Is there any value in, in from the outside? I mean, I'm, what are your advice? I think there's always value in having somebody look at it from outside. I, I you know, let me say this. We just put it sort of back on the front burner with our meeting with him. And, uh, one of the things we're going to be doing is looking through it and going sort of section by section, whatever. Um, so we probably ought to stay on that track for now and then decide down the road uh, if we feel comfortable with it. Okay. Well, I mean, that's very simple. We move forward with how we're moving. But, I mean, to, to stress Mr. Williams' concern, what I don't want to see, and I, I would think, I would hope the council would agree with me that, we don't want this to just come to a standstill. No way. Just because of manpower issues and we can't get it done. But I perhaps move forward. I have a question for you too, Matt, Mary. So in reference to, to Bob's you know, motion and whatnot too, but I, I, I'm a little personally uncomfortable understanding the status of where we are between this two. I don't know that there's enough information. I've seen personally, and it could be my fault, but seen enough information to actually you know, make a recommendation. Hey, we're this far we need somebody to help us get us over the edge, you know, finish, you know, over the finish line with it, or are we progressing internally, you know, so in a sufficient manner to be able to continue to handle the problem? I, I feel like I need a status update of this, and I'm not sure. Well, my, my answer to that, Eric, would be exactly what, what Bob said, is that let's move ahead here and let's have a few meetings with the four of us, and if we get to a point where we're saying, um, hey, maybe we do need somebody outside. I don't think we're at that point right now. Okay. Uh, so we may be. I'm not saying we won't. But as Linda pointed out, the winter's coming up. Maybe things will die down a little bit on that. Um, and I cited uh, some uh, issues that I, that I thought, and one of them is, is exactly what Bob just mentioned with respect to mix, mixed-use development. We talked about the medical overlay that was put into it. Uh, on Moss Side Boulevard, and also I, I talked about the uh, the updated comprehensive plan that we have to continue working with Wilkins and Churchill on, and also the active transportation plan that has to be in incorporated. We were talking about sidewalks before on Old William Penn Highway and, and bike trails on, on different um, road, roads that can handle it. We were talking about that, and that, excuse me, that's been adopted in the active transportation and some of that should be incorporated into the zoning ordinance. So those things have to be looked at. Mr. Wilton is quite capable of, uh, of doing it, and it, time is always the factor, but I agree with Bob. Let's move ahead with a couple meetings and, and see where we are. So, so what I'm hearing is, is we're not ready for motion. In, in, tuna, in last part of my planning commission experience, two and a half years we worked on this with the help of Mr. Muller, and uh, we was only, uh, I think, a few months away from sending it to the county. And it was just put on hold from them for eight years. And uh, it's just time to put it on fast track and uh, put a little pressure on it. I, I, think, we're, I think we're doing that right now as, as we stand at this meeting. So let's have the staff move forward on it. Um, but to Mr. Poach's question, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, I think everyone agrees that we want to get it moving. And... Uh, Council wants to act on that motion. M M Mr. Mayor, may I? Go ahead. Now, the reason uh, Bob and I have talked about this on several occasions and the other reason why he put that out and I seconded it is that those don't get pushed aside. 
doesn't mean it has to get done tomorrow. But let's just don't let it get shoved up in, in a closet somewhere as it has. And they're not like, the, no, no, no offense to Mr. Weldon, he's doing a great job. We just don't want that to get lost in translation, if you will. It, it, it won't get lost. We're going we're gonna to have a meeting. It's a minimum once a month, if not more than that. And we're going to move ahead with it. And we're, we'll see if, if we need, to, need some outside help to expedite things. I'll let you know. I can't imagine. Bob, 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 nothing really gets accomplished after a certain amount of meetings. So if you say December 31st, we'll, we'll work on it in January 21, that's a great idea. But if, if we're gonna keep pushing this down the road, we need to know when we're gonna act on this thing. We're asking for status updates like every couple months. Is that what you want, Tom? Er, er, what, what well, the... actually, Linda, no, thank you. But uh, I, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see for somebody to say, okay, December 31st, 2020, all right, well, this is this is what we would like to do in, in uh, the January meeting of 2021, we put it on the agenda and we vote for it and get it moving. That might, I mean, I think that might be a difficult ask with all the different parts that are involved with yeah. Transportation plan and the comprehensive plan. Well, like Bob said, how many years ago did you start on this? 11 years? About, about 12 years ago. Yeah, and you're right. It did get shelved, but now we're bringing it to the to the forward. Um, why don't we – there's a motion and a second to get this moving on a fast track. I know it's a very okay. polite comment. Okay. So I'm just going to say all in favor. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed to that. So the ayes have it. What I'll suggest is – uh, Mr. Little, either next month's meeting, just give us a brief update of, yes, you're moving forward, no, you're not, we had it, we caught a snag, we didn't, and just kind of keep us in the loop, and then Mr. Right. Little, we'll actually hold you uh, accountable as well, if you want to bring it up in your reports moving forward as well, just to ask about it too, and yeah. uh, I think, I think everyone, I'm hearing the same thing from everybody, that everybody wants to see it moving forward, and we just have to make sure it's done the best way. Whether we can do it in-house and save some money, and Mr. Wielden is certainly capable, but if we need some extra help to get this done, I, I agree with Mr. Williams. I believe it's extremely important for us to revisit the zoning ordinance and get it updated. So if we have to visit it at budget time to work it in a consultant for next year, then we do it. So um, the motion stands. Thank you. Mr. Williams, do you have any other comments for this evening? No, I, I just uh, thank you for the uh, uh, talking about it and in tune with it and realizing that Monroeville business is a big part of Monroeville. Uh, that's because their taxes are low and uh, if we could just work with the school district and get their taxes down, the people would be in line to move into Monroeville. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. And Mr. Wilson. Okay, everybody awake now. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. First of all, I uh, would like to uh, wish Joe Hizzy a um, yeah, I agree. Joe had this accident uh, last week. I think it was Thursday. And uh, good luck, Joe, and best wishes. Uh, and Officer uh, Friedrich passed away the other day. Uh, Freddie was a, a good friend. He was a neighbor. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he served our uh, municipality well. I, I'm not sure how many years, but around 25 years generally. So do you know Ron, how many years Freddie was there? Oh, I'm not sure. I can tell you he was a senior officer when I got hired. He trained oh, me. Okay. All right. So, all right. Then I would like to say thank you to Tara and Nicole. Uh, nice job, both of you. I know it's been... Uh, along this way with all this uh, pandemic issues and uh, uh, you both have done extremely well. Thank you. Uh, I would like to propose 
that we draft a resolution for no parking on China Berry and Dahlia Drives overnight. I have a couple letters from uh, some folks and uh, it's very difficult for them it, uh, when there is uh, parking on both sides of the street just to get through and it's uh, unsafe. I'm not quite sure how we go forward with this uh, legislation in order to uh, add parking, no parking signs. Well, so Ms. Mr. Wilson, so are, are you saying just no parking overnight, two to six? Overnight, yes. Yeah. yeah, so it's my understanding that that is already a, a blanket ordinance yeah. for the municipality. So really all I think we always have to do internally is have public works post the signs and then okay. have the that's, that's fantastic. Thank you. So I think we just, if ever, I mean, I'm all right. I'll speak to uh, Mr. Yugis and uh, we'll get this thing moving. Yeah, and I received some complaints uh, about that area as well. And I think uh, you're doing that. That'd be good to tackle yeah. that, uh, Mr. Wilson. And uh, thanks to uh, public works. Uh, Mr. Yugis, uh, uh, Jamie, and uh, all the other folks that are involved with the parking lot. And uh, I didn't realize how much uh, work was involved in this thing. And to the garbage men, I don't know about you, but I don't get up that early, uh, Steve. And uh, they come through my way about 4.30 in the morning. So I might be getting up to go to the bathroom, but that's the only reason I'm up. <laughs> well, they timed it perfectly for me getting up to go to the post office. Yeah. And sometimes they wake up my wife and I can't tell for that. Why don't you tell those guys to be more quiet? Well, that's not their job to be quiet. Their job is to do a great job, and that's what they do. And uh, after that, then I'm finished, and thank you very much. Tom, what was the second? Uh, she, you said China Berry was the second one? Uh, Dahlia. Dahlia, okay. For the overnight parking, yes. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. And I will uh, finish up. I'm going to be repeating some things that have already been mentioned. But, uh, yes, Labor Day is coming up. A fireworks display is the Sunday evening at the mall. It's going to be a big display. And uh, please, we're going to keep in mind all of our laborers during this time frame. All of our employees, I know council has already thanked all the employees internally, what they've been doing from public works to our police department, to all of our departments. This evening we had Nicole and Tara come. I mean, I'll give kudos to Mr. Little, who is, is working extremely hard during this pandemic. It's a challenge for everyone involved in the municipality. So I just wanna thank all of our employees here at the municipality for everything they do for our community. And I also wanna broaden that as well for everyone uh, in the business district, like Mr. Williams mentioned, all of our businesses, all of our workers that are going to those jobs, during this pandemic, keep our community afloat. I wanna thank our, all of our essential workers, all of our hospital workers from, I wanna thank the, everything that Allegheny Health Network, Forbes Hospital and Dr. Rubino, what, what they've been doing over there and UPMC East with uh, Mark O'Hearn under his direction, both hospital systems, phenomenal job uh, during this pandemic our first responders, the list goes on and on and on. And that's really what we should be celebrating on Labor Day. Unfortunately, yes, as was mentioned, we, we were unable to do the parade just because of the social distancing, the planning of the parade. It's very unfortunate, but you know, this fireworks display, it's gonna be really nice. We're gonna put some extra money into it. Uh, the Convention Visitors Bureau, Visit Monroeville, they're chipping in um, into it as well. And also the fireworks company, they gave us more of a credit as well. It's gonna be a nice big display and uh, we have a lot to celebrate here in our community and a lot to be, uh, to look forward to and to be thankful for, for everyone that has been really doing above and beyond and going above and beyond for, uh, for the community. Uh, so once again, please support your businesses here in Monroeville. If you're going into the businesses, please wear a mask. It's a state law, whether you like it or not, please, our businesses, the employees are not are not there to uh, have you put a mask on. It's, it's not what they're, they're there for. So please play by the rules, wear the mask when you're in our businesses and support them. Uh, I know Mrs. Gatos mentioned earlier about our cleanup day that I will just reiterate it. It's the 25th annual, which is rescheduled for August 29th, Saturday, August 29th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Beautify your neighborhood, park, school, 
church, house of worship, or roadway. Tired of litter strewn, strewn streets. Joe said like gets me every time with that. Litter strewn streets. So if there's litter out there and you want to clean it up, please get involved. It's always a great event. And unfortunately, he cannot have the picnic like they always do. But uh, Joe has wonderful prizes as he does every year. Things keep coming in, uh, you know, from the different organizations, from the businesses, from the sports teams. So everyone that signs up will get entered into the raffle for tickets. You don't need to be present for any kind of drawing. You'll just be we'll notified if you, you win. Shirts will be given out as well as they always do in all the cleanup supplies. So you can go to the municipal website to get the paperwork for this or through the rec department. Uh, I'm sure it's at the library. It's available there as well. But it is on the municipal website, and you can sign up. And, uh, and also, too, just a, a little uh, suggestion. A lot of kids out there that have to get hours for school. Um, I know that there's some high schools that require seniors to have hours. This is a perfect opportunity. I'd be happy to assist anyone in uh, signing off on those hours. Also, I know some of the uh, some of the churches. I know confirmation. These the kids need hours, so parents, this is a good opportunity. So Jack said, like Memorial Cleanup Day, Saturday, August 29th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Please get involved. Mayor, I would like to add one more thing, if I could, when you're finished, please. Sure, I won't close it up until you're until I go back to you. Uh, we have elections uh, coming up in November. As many of you know, I mean, I think almost everybody has to know in America that there, this is an election year. Uh, one thing I just want to point out, uh, mail-in ballots. This is something that there's a lot of uh, discussion about. People are for it. People are against it. The main thing I want to stress that there is, uh, if you're getting anything from the, the Allegheny County Division of Elections, it'll be clearly stated as such. So please read your mail very carefully. Uh, there is uh, there are some third parties, some organizations that are sending out these ballots, and they look really official. I've actually received one at my house for myself. Uh, there were some actually some 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 typos with my my name as well, um, but it looked really official. And uh, you got to read things very very carefully. So please pay attention to your labels. It's from the Allegheny County Division or Department of Elections. Uh, if you receive anything, but I am definitely an advocate of in person voting. Amen. I believe out here in Monroeville, yep. our poll workers, our election workers, they do a phenomenal job. Over the years, I've, I've, I've never had to, to wait very long. They get people in and out. Um, I'll reserve my comments about what happened in the primary, but uh, hopefully they find a way to do it better. But um, please get out there and vote in November. Uh, and, but if you really feel like you need to do the mail-in ballot, you're more comfortable doing that. Please make sure you're getting it from the right source. It's very important. And certainly, uh, you know, if you have any questions or concerns, call my office, call your council person, call the, you know, the front desk if you have any questions about this, or even Senator Brewster's office or Representative Markozik's office about this information. And uh, that's, that's all I have right now, other than saying we got to keep washing our hands and social, be socially distant from each other out there. If you cannot, please wear the mask. And I want to wish my, my wife a happy birthday here uh, next week. So, uh, Mr. Wilson, you had one more thing to say. Yes, sir. Uh, I would just like to say that my granddaughter presented me with my great-granddaughter on Saturday. And uh, I know I'm too young for that, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that you have to take along with the good with the bad, right? So I love my granddaughter, my new granddaughter, Avery. And uh, everybody's doing well. My granddaughter just came home from the hospital today. And uh, just thank God everybody's well. Thank you so much. Great. Um, Tom, I just heard from uh, Joe Hizzy. He says, thank you for the best wishes. And contrary to popular belief, he's still alive. Don't send flowers yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple other words I can't say over the air. No, no, no. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity, Joe. We wish you the best, uh, Mr. Wilson. Now it is just official. We always knew you were a great grandfather. Well, thank you. I appreciate. Now it. it's official. So at any rate, with that, I seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.